Hello, uh, we're looking here at a microscopic section of one of the coronary arteries embedded within the epicardial or pericardial fat. So let's just very quickly recap the layers of the normal vessel wall. Um, the innermost layer here is called the intima and this is lined here by a layer of endothelial cells which immediately is present adjacent to the lumen. Now, just beneath the intima is the media, tunica media, and you can see that it is composed of these smooth muscle cells with central nuclei and a very spindled appearance. And then deep to that is the adventitia. Now, let's move on to look at an abnormal vessel. Here is a coronary artery that is obviously very abnormal. The lumen has actually been compressed almost to a slit-like opening over here. Here we can still see this is the endothelial lining, this is the tunica intima, and this darker red line, which I will trace here now, this is the tunica media, which is the smooth muscle layer. Yeah, and you can actually just appreciate some of the spindle smooth muscle cells with the densely pink or eosinophilic cytoplasm. And just beneath that is the adventitia. So the main bulk of the pathology actually lies in the intima, which is very, very markedly thickened by this deposit of abnormal material. Now in the center, we can see some empty spaces where material has dropped out, but we also see these cleft-like, slit-like spaces. These are where cholesterol used to be but was washed out during processing. So this is actually the lipid deposit in an atheroma. Now surrounding this atheroma, there, there are these areas of pinkish material with very, very few cells. This is extracellular material including things like proteoglycans, etc. We also see some cellular material. So we can see uh, inflammatory cells. Over here we have a couple of foam cells with abundant pale foamy cytoplasm and relatively small nuclei. And we also have some proliferation of smooth muscle cells as well as fibroblasts with these um, spindly looking cells with elongated nuclei. And these cells here, the smooth muscle cells, fibroblast, and extracellular matrix, as well as the inflammatory cells, and these form the fibrous cap of the atheroma. So what can happen is that sometimes the fibrous cap can rupture or ulcerate, precipitating thrombosis. And when there is thrombosis, this already narrowed wall can actually become completely occluded, giving rise to myocardial infarction. So just to recap, we have a coronary artery where the lumen is markedly narrowed due to the presence of an atherometus plaque or an atheroma, which is composed of a central lipid core that is rich in cholesterol crystals and covered by a fibrous cap and also surrounded by extracellular material, uh, proliferating fibroblasts, smooth muscle cells, foamy cells, as well as some inflammatory cells.